Hello, God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. My name is Steve Roy. I'm here today to talk to you about um, how do we do respond to, the op to opposition when we are sharing God's Word. Uh, in the, some of the previous uh, sessions in this um, group of teachings, you've learned how to share your faith, different techniques, things like that. But today we're going to talk about what happens when you get resistance. What happens when you're sharing the love of God with people and they're not responding in the way that you had hoped. Um, sometimes it's a negative response. Sometimes it's uh, someone who outwardly, out, outwardly just rejects what you're saying. And sometimes it's, there's questions. There's, people have questions in their mind, and they're not really sure what you're saying. And they're, they're considering what you're saying, but they're not really responding in a way that you'd like. So the first thing I wanted to share was that <clears throat> we have to recognize and remember that we, we are human beings. We live in this world. We come from different backgrounds, different trainings. We all have our own preferences. Um, some people like different kinds of weather, different kinds of clothes, different kinds of sports teams, especially if you're a guy. Um, and so we, we all already have preferences. And you've been in situations when you've had conversations with people that maybe aren't close friends, but acquaintances, and you're developing a relationship with them. And that's a big part of this. Uh, it's a lot different talking to someone who you've never met about Jesus Christ versus someone who you've started to develop a relationship and a friendship. Because as you develop a friendship with people, there's, there's some trust that's built up and where, where people will start listening to what you have to say and not necessarily reject it on its face. So we're going to assume that there's some kind of relationship, that there's some trust, a little bit of trust built up at least. But yet when you start sharing the gospel, people might um, not, not believe what you say or, or come up with arguments or, or, or talk about things and ask questions about things that uh, maybe you're not anticipating from them. But we all have differences and we all have different opinions. And you know, if you've lived long enough, you've been in conversations with people about all types of topics and they disagree with you. And um, how you, how you re react to that, those disagreements is typically you talk about them and maybe it affects a friendship or it affects a relationship, but it doesn't mean that, that there's, there's something wrong with that person. They just have a different opinion. And so sometimes we learn how to deal with those things uh, in everyday life, on our job or in school or wherever we are. But sometimes it seems like when it comes to spiritual matters, we don't really apply the same principles and we don't learn the lessons of how to basically engage uh, with people that have different opinions. Because spiritual matters are so important to us and we're very uh, con convinced of what we believe, sometimes our reaction to, to other people um, is, is not the same as if you were disagreeing about something in, in your life or in, in, your, in your personal preference. So it's really important for us to realize even that even though we really believe and, and, and uh, want our spiritual beliefs to be passed on to other people. We have to recognize that people come from different places and you can't force anyone to believe something that they haven't accepted on their own. Uh, the third part is there's different reasons why people don't believe. And um, the real key to uh, communicating uh, who Jesus Christ is is by them seeing your life and, and communicating by words and actions. The way God loves us and the way Jesus Christ came to earth, His nature was shown in Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ uh, loved people, healed people, uh, and, eventually, and at, at times confronted people. But He really was conf confrontational and, and um, spoke wor strong words against people who, really, who were trying to keep other people coming to the Lord. So even though sometimes we read the Bible and we see some harsh language in the Bible, most of the time the language that's harsh is, is addressed to people that are, not, are preventing others from coming to the Lord. So we need to keep that in our, in our minds. And I know from my ex experience, and perhaps you, you've started to learn it too, is that people come from a different faith um, tradition. It, maybe it's uh, not Judeo-Christian, maybe it's agnostic, maybe it's... Um, uh, an, another faith that originates from, an, from that, that talk about and worship other gods or many gods or no god. And some people have been hurt by these or, unfortunately, the Christian faith groups, people that have shown an interest in God and have been taken advantage of or been in a bad situation or have had wrong things taught to them, and they've been hurt emotionally uh, by some of the things that people have done. So we can't assume that everyone is coming uh, with a blank slate, um, often today, often in modern times, 
you'll be talking to people who have no concept of Jesus Christ. They never heard his name in any way that was meaningful. And yet, um, there, are, there will be people that, that will tell you, when you sit down with them, they'll tell you about their long history <laughs> of their church experience. That could be very hurtful. And those are the things that they're opposed to, not necessarily the gospel of Jesus Christ. So when we talk about these things, there's three sections of Scripture that come to mind for me, and I, I wanted to go through them one by one. Uh, the first one is 1 Corinthians 13, and this, is maybe, this might be unusual for you to, to t- talk about in a situation when we're talking about uh, how to deal with opposition to, G- to, to the gospel being shared by you. But I really like 1 Corinthians 13 because what I've learned and seen in so many ways is that it's the love of God that is number one for, to communicate to other people. We have to show people that God loves them, and we have to show that by our actions. And 1 Corinthians 13 does that, does that very well. I'm going to read it right here. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 1, If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a, no, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. In if, verse 2, And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so I can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but not have love, I gain nothing. And this is how sometimes we can come across very zealous. When I was young, I was very zealous for the Lord, and I would come on very strong, um, and I would do all kinds of things. I would talk about the God's miracles, and this and that, and how God did this for me, and that for me, and, and I was really trying to sell... <laughs> Christianity to someone, rather than show that the reason why God does things for us is because He loves us. And I wasn't showing love. I was not loving. I wasn't being loving at all. I was just trying to, I was, I was, I was more puffed up than, than genuine love. And that's not the way that people are going to come to the Lord. Verse 4, love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. So verse 4 is what I did. <laughs> It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. It never quits. So even as you are talking with someone and sharing your your faith, and genuinely, sometimes you you really open your heart to people, and it feels like they step on your heart, You have to recognize that the love of God is there, and it never ends. The love of God toward you never ends, and the love of God towards the person you're sharing with never ends. So completely separate from their reaction to you, you have to really understand and believe that God's love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when when the perfect comes, verse 10... That partial will pass away. And I love this part because this was me. <laughs> when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. But when I became a man, I gave up childish ways. And that's, how, that's what we have to do as we share our faith with people. We have to give up our childish ways. We don't fight like we're on the playground and you took my toy and this is right, you're wrong. You know, bully, bullying, trying to bully people and all those activities that child, children do. We can be that way as Christians if we're not careful. We have to grow up it, it become adults and love people unconditionally. Verse 12, for, for, we, for, we see in a, for we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know, know fully, even as I am fully known. So now faith, hope, and love. So now, faith, hope, and love abide, these three, but the greatest of these is love. This is a verse that you should memorize. (laughs) We talk about faith, we talk about hope. God says the greatest thing is love. God so loved that he gave his son, we're supposed to so love that we give people the grace and the love unconditionally, even our enemies, the Bible says to love your enemies, so that they can come to the Lord, that they can see God's love for them through us by not judging or reacting or becoming emotional in, as we present the gospel to them. 
The love of God is an unstoppable force that can't be resisted. I've, always, I've said this many times. The world has no answer for the love of God. The devil can't fight the love of God because it's unconditional. There's no answer that can fight back the love of God. You can deny it, but you can't resist it. The love of God is what reaches people. It's what reached us and, and will continue to reach people. Only the true God can give us the power to love unconditionally, even our enemies. We can love because he loved us. So if there's anything that you come, come away with in how to deal with opposition, just remember love. <laughs> love covers a multitude of sins. It'll cover your mistakes as you share your faith. Um, because people really people want to see you and and see what you see see your heart before they hear your words. The second verse uh, verses are in Rome is in Romans two. Uh, the next two verses I'm going to share. This, I want to start in Romans. I want to do Romans two first. But the next two sections of scripture are really taken from scripture where there was a lot of resistance against God. There were people that were openly disobeying God, shaking their fist at Him recognizing that there was a God, but, but walking away from him on purpose. And uh, within, the, within the context of God showing that that's our nature, our nature is to rebel against God. And this is, this is addressed to Christians too. <laughs> our nature is to not accept God, it's to resist him. There's, there's verses that come that, that, that are, are present in God's word that show us that God still is still present and available to us, and he, he, doesn't, he doesn't hold against us our resistance to him as long as we respond. So in the book of Romans, chapter 1, talks, has a long list of how people are rebel, openly rebelling against God and disobeying him. And in Romans 2, verse 4, God stops that story, <laughs> and he says, Look, don't judge, don't judge other people for their behavior. Because you do the same thing. Because you, you still have rebellion in your heart. And verse, two, verse 4 says, Do not presume on the riches of His kindness and forbearance and patience, not knowing that God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance. It's the goodness of God. It's the kindness of God that will lead men to repentance. Just like we talked about the love of God, does it? It's His goodness in even when we're open, in open rebellion and arguing with God, it's still His goodness that's going to lead people to repentance. So we can't change our tactics. <laughs> God's telling us to love. He's telling us to be good. It says to forbear, which means to restrain yourself from reacting. He says, he says God is patient, which is long-suffering. He, again, love never gives up. And His kindness shows the excellence of His character. Even, even as people disagree, He continues to love. So we have to have, that's God's intention. We have to have that same, same heart, and we have to allow men and women, uh, when they know the true nature of God, when they know God's true nature and what the Lord has done for them, to turn by their own free will. They have to turn. We can't make them turn. That's what repentance is. Repentance is changing from the direction I'm going, turning around and going in an opposite direction, and that direction is toward God. We can't make people do that. They have to do it on their own. And people will do that as they see that God loves them. We can't force it. And sometimes you have to stop <laughs> in a conversation and let them come to grips with that. Uh, people aren't one. People are often not one automatically. They need time to, to consider that. So up until now, we've really we really haven't talked about what you how you can prepare yourself to share share your faith or how to address opposition. There's been other sections that have talked to you about how to develop relationships and share your faith. But we haven't really talked about what you can do for in, in yourself to prepare for opposition. And the reason why I waited till the end to share that is because the real work of conversion is God's job. God's love and God's patience and another person's willingness to repent and turn toward God is God's job. Our job is to love and to communicate the love of God to people. But we do have a job. We have to speak God's word. And in order to speak God's word, we have to know God's word. And that's uh, the third uh, scripture I wanted to share with you is Hebrews 4, verse 12. Again, this is a context. The book of Hebrews is written to Israel and how they resisted God and they refused to enter into his rest. 
God called them into his rest to come to him and rest in him. Just like in Romans, God called men to repent and come to a knowledge of him. In Hebrews, he called, he called Israel to come into his rest, and people refused to come into his rest. And God gave direction to, to, the, to, the, to the leaders on how to deal with the, that kind of resistance to God. So, again, opposition to, this, to the scriptures that you're sharing is the same thing as resistance to God. They weren't listening. And so rather than getting into long arguments, Hebrews 4, 12 uh, this is what it says. This is a verse that you should have. You should memorize. There's a number of verses that will help you in your Christian walk, and certainly as you deal with people, this is one that would be great for, to, to, to memorize. Hebrews 4.12, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, of joints and marrow, discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. There's no substitute for your individual study of God's Word. In order, to, in order to share Jesus Christ properly with an, a person, whether they're, whether they're uh, opposing you or not, and certainly when they are opposing you, is, is having a knowledge of Scripture in your heart. If you read the Bible and study it for your own personal growth, you'll have Scriptures in your heart that the Lord can then use in a situation where you're, someone is opposing you in, in, as you share your faith. God can't use something that's not inside of you. <laughs> if you have an experience in your life, God can use that experience. As I'm sure you've been heard, that you've heard in other sessions. If, if you've learned a lesson, you can use that lesson to share God, uh, God's love and, and, and faith in Christ. But if you, learn, if you learn God's Word, God can use that Word of God, and it can be as sharp as a sword. I've been in situations where I've said things to somebody, I never planned on saying it, but God gave me that those words, that scripture, and I've spoken it, to, spoken it to, to a person, and it just stopped them in their tracks. And that's really what it takes sometimes when someone is, is opposing you, is you just got to get them to stop and think <laughs> about what you're saying, rather than only listening enough and waiting to pause, for, somebody to, for you to pause so they can come back at you with an argument. You know, we don't want to get into sword fights. We don't want to be hitting people over the head with Bibles. We don't want to be quoting Scripture at people back and forth. Even though you know Scripture, you don't use it as a weapon against somebody to win an argument. You're trying to win their heart. You're trying to share God's love so that their, their heart can change. And so you can't win an argument by words because salvation is a, an issue of the heart. It's not an issue of the head. So when you, when, you get, when you feel like you're talking to someone and you're really having an argument and you're trying to win the argument, and you feel like I need to get them to at least believe what you're saying or appear to agree what you're saying, you're only winning them here. You're not winning them here. Okay. So sometimes the best reaction uh, to a situation when you feel like the, uh, the uh, conversation is getting elevated to, be, to, getting, to becoming emotional is to just stop. Silence sometimes is the best answer. There's times when you remember the time in the Bible where Jesus... A woman got brought to Jesus, and they said, what are you going to do with her? She, she was caught in adultery, and he just stopped, and just put, he just went down to the ground and drew in the ground. He just, quiet. And sometimes, sometimes quiet is, is some of the best responses to let people settle down and think about the words that are being shared. So in conclusion, I just wanted to encourage you to not be afraid to have conversations about Jesus Christ. Don't be surprised if people don't believe you because we live in a world where there's a lot of different belief systems. But if you have the Word of God in your heart, God can take that Word of God and the Spirit of God in you and have you share and say the words that need to be said for that person. And above all, <laughs> don't ever judge the fruit of the conversation. You can, you may not be the person that leads that person to the Lord. I've been in situations where I've, it's, I've had the opportunity to have a conversation with someone and they accept the Lord because I've shared the, you know, who Jesus Christ is. But often I've found out that for years and years, other people have planted and watered, at, but, but I, was the one for, I was there for the harvest. I was able to, to harvest the fruit, but yet it wasn't really all of my work. It was, it was how the Lord brought people through. So don't ever judge, don't ever judge um, 
the fruit. I'll and fin finish with one story. So when I grew up, uh, I had a wonderful father. He was, um, we grew up in a church, a very traditional church, not a lot of Bible, but a lot of tradition. We heard, we heard the gospel, but wasn't really a, you know, didn't lead to fit really a relationship with Jesus Christ. And I, re I believed in God, and the reason why I believed in God is because I asked him once, do you believe in God, Dad? He says, yes. And he, he told the story about why he believed in God. It was, was very convincing to me as, as a child. So though even though I believed in God because my father did, I didn't see a lot of fruit in his life. I continued to be hungry, and I wanted to know more about Jesus Christ. While I was in college, I started to learn more about Jesus Christ, and I got really excited. And, you know, in my youthful zeal, I went home and started preaching to my father, <laughs> hitting him over the head with the Bible, doing all the things that I told you not to do. And he resisted. He dug in. You know, how can my son know this? And he dug in and resisted me his whole life um, for, or for many years. And every time I saw him, he knew, he knew I was coming <laughs> with another argument for him. And we just, it was a sword fight. Uh, between him and I. And it took many years for, for the Lord to sit me down and say, look, you're not going to convince him about anything. You just need to love him. And so I decided that I was never going to talk about Jesus again to my father. Now, that was hard because that was my, that's how I, that's how I lived. And um, he told me, he, he told me, the Lord told me to not, to not talk about Jesus anymore I visited him every three months, spent the weekend with him. We did stuff in the yard, did all kinds of projects with him. He got sick, and um, slowly he, he slowly got more and more sick, and eventually he passed away. And up until the very last day of his life, I never shared the gospel with him. And I was very disappointed that I didn't have an opportunity to, to make sure that he had eternal life. Well, it turned out at his funeral, this, this older couple came up to me and said, did you, ever hear, did you ever hear the story about your father? And I said, no. He said, well, they, he was in the hospital, and we came into the room, and we sat down next to him, and we shared Jesus Christ with him, and he, con he recognized Jesus Christ as his Lord and, and confessed him uh, as his Savior. The next day, he was gone. So for me, the comfort in that was amazing. But the lesson was better <laughs> because it wasn't, it wasn't me convincing. It wasn't me arguing. It was the Lord drawing people in. And God used all these other people to get to, get to the point where he received the Lord, and I, I know I'll see him in heaven. And that the fruit of being faithful and obedient and, not, and doing what the Lord says rather than what you think is, is how we're going to win people to the Lord. And, that's gonna, and you'll see the fruit of that if you, if you recognize that it's not about you, it's about Jesus Christ. And it's not about your arguments, it's about the love of God. So God bless you.